So, the last previous lecture we were discussing about the CRC equations. So, first we will continue with the same CRC equations and then later on we will go for harmonic functions. We have discussed during this process the analytic functions and we have seen the function is generated at a point z naught if it is not only differentiable at z naught, but at every point in some neighborhood of z naught. And if the function is analytic everywhere in a domain D, then we say function at each point, then function is analytic at this point. Function and we have seen the examples where the function is differentiable, but not analytic like mod z square, which is differentiable at 0, but not analytic at the point 0, because it is nowhere other differences the function is not differentiable in the surrounding of 0. So, like this and one more thing which we have seen that CRC equations, these are the necessary condition for a function to be analytic or differentiable at the point z equal to z naught. However, this these conditions are not sufficient, which we have seen by an example f z is something which we have discussed. So, what should be the extra condition required over the partial derivatives, so that the C R equations also behave as a sufficient condition for a function to be analytic. So, today first we will discuss the result the which says that under this restriction the C R equations will also behave as a sufficient condition for a function to be analytic. So, let us see the first the sufficient condition sufficient conditions for a function sufficient conditions in terms of C R C equation for a function f z which is u plus i v to be analytic. This is our thing. So, we have the result in the form of theorem. The result says <coughs> suppose function f where u and v are can, suppose the function f z which is u plus i v u is a function of x y v is also function of x y where u and v are continuous functions and purchase and purchase continuous and purchase continuous partial derivatives continuous first order partial derivatives continuous first order partial derivatives in a domain D. domain t ok domain d z in which the point z lies where the z belongs to d ok. Now, if u and v if in addition to this if in addition to this u and v satisfy C R C equation C R C equations at all points in D in D then the function function f which is u plus i v each analytic 
in D and the derivative of the function f z can be given by the formula del u over del x plus i times del v over del y or equivalently the same as del v over del y minus i del u over del y. So, if the function whose real and imaginary parts are continuous possess a continuous partial derivatives of first order in a domain D where these points lie, then also in addition to this if u and b also satisfy the CRS equation at every point in the domain D, then we say function will be analytic in the domain D. And to discuss the analyticity at a point z naught, what we do, we consider the neighborhood around the point z naught and then we claim that CRS equation must be satisfying at all points in the neighborhood of the z naught, then we say function. Okay. So, proof. Now, consider the delta neighborhood of this. Consider n z delta that is the set of those points z dash such that the distance from z dash to z remain less than delta that is the delta neighborhood of the point z in D. Consider this. Now, it is given that partial derivative of u and v both are continuous function. So, once it is continuous then the total differential can be expressed in the following form. Now, since the partial derivatives the partial derivatives of u and v are continuous and u and v are the function of two variable u is a function of two variable u is a function of u x y v is also a function of x and y. So, in case of the two variable if function is continuous then we can express this the total increment delta u can be expressed as del u over del x into delta x plus del u over del y into delta y plus epsilon 1 delta x plus epsilon 2 delta y and similarly delta v can be written as del v over del x delta x plus del v over del y delta y plus epsilon 1 or epsilon 3 you can change also delta x plus epsilon 4 delta y. This is the total increment in u and v in the neighborhood of the point z. Uh, we are we are epsilon 1, epsilon 2, epsilon 3 and epsilon 4 are very very small number and tends to 0 as delta x goes to 0, delta y goes to 0. So, this is by definition of a function of the two variable. If we have a function of two variable then total increment delta u and delta v can be expressed into this form. Okay. Now, consider f of z plus delta z minus f of z that is the total increment in f. So, that will be equal to the same delta u plus i delta v because f z is u plus i v. So, f z plus delta u minus this that increment in delta u plus i times delta v, but delta u and delta v are given by this. So, find out the delta u plus i times this. So, if I multiply this by i and this then the entire thing can be expressed as del u over del x plus i times del v over del x. So, this delta x is out then del u over del y uh, from here epsilon 1 delta x and epsilon 2 delta x. So, we can write it this as multiply by <laughs> delta 
epsilon alpha delta x plus i delta y plus epsilon alpha 1 plus i epsilon alpha 3 delta x plus epsilon alpha 3 i epsilon alpha 4 delta y. Now, this is given what is given is the partial derivative u and v are continuous and possess a continuous uh, and they satisfy the CRS equation. So, because of the CRS equation, we can rewrite this thing in this form, is it not? Because this will be equal to del u over del x plus i times this one. Then, when you multiply by i here, then what happens is del u over del x into delta y. So, here del u over del y i del uh, will be the uh, CRS equations mean uh, this is because CRS equation says del u over del x is the del v over del y and del u over del y is minus del v over del x. So, use this form and get this. If you just multiply you will get the same thing which you combined it. So, we are not going in detail like this. Now, this part is nothing but the f prime x f prime z say or del u over del x plus i term. So, we can say this implies that mod of f plus delta z minus f z divided by delta z and then delta z means delta x plus i delta y this is delta z divided uh, by and minus f z divided by delta z. So, what you are getting is this term is free from this part bring it this side del u over del x i times del v over del x and then mod of this. Now, this part is less than equal to what modulus of this thing. Now, modulus of this thing is mod of epsilon l 1 plus i times epsilon l 3 mod of delta x plus mod of epsilon l 3 i times epsilon l 4 mod of delta y. Now, as delta x and delta y tends to 0, as delta z tends to 0 means that is delta x goes to 0, delta y goes to 0. So, the right hand side, so epsilon l 1, epsilon l 2, epsilon l 3, epsilon l 4 will go to 0. Therefore, the and delta x, delta y already tends, so right hand side will go to 0. So, right hand side will tends to 0. Therefore, the left hand side will also limit of this is nothing but this part. So, we get from here is so the limit of this a delta z tends to 0 f of z plus delta z minus f of z divided by delta z is nothing but del u over del x plus i times del v over del y. And this limit if it exists it is nothing but the what f prime z. So, the derivative of this is nothing but the value of this and now if we apply the CRS equation apply CRS equation then the same thing can be written in the form which we required it in the first part that is we wanted this del v over del y minus i. So, use the del, del u over del x is del v over del y and del and del v over del y uh, CRS equations is the del u over del x is there and del v over del x is uh, these are the CRS equation del u over del x is del v over del y and del u over del y is minus del v over del x. So, here we can write it this is uh, del u over del x is del v over del y and del v I think this is x. I did a mistake here somewhere maybe del u over del y. So, somewhere this is x, this is x. So, this will be x therefore, this is x sorry, this is x and now it is equivalent to uh, the thing <coughs> that is minus i del u over del y. Okay? So, del u over del y minus del v over del x and del u over del y. So, this is the same thing. So, this shows that the derivative exists if the CRS equations uh, 
are satisfied and the partial derivatives are continuous. So, this proves the results. Okay. Now, what went wrong when you discuss the previous result? If you say in the last in the last exercise, that is when we go, we have considered this function f z is x cube one plus i minus y cube one minus i over x square plus y square when x y differs from 0 0 and 0 when x y is equal to 0 0. Now, we have seen in this uh, this that the C R C equations are satisfied at the point 0 0, but the function f z is not differentiable at z equal to 0. This we have already established. Let us apply this result. Why? Why this is so? It means the C R C equations are already set, but the partial derivative are not continuous. That is why this function is not analytic or differentiable at 0 0. <coughs> the reason is what is the partial? So, clearly what is the del uh, u? The u becomes x cube minus y cube over x square by square this is u and 0 when it is 0. So, when you write the del u over del x this becomes just square of this. Okay. This is the now the numerator and denominator are having the same degree that is it is in degree way. So, if we put y is equal to m x then limit of del u over del x when x tends to 0 is equivalent to limit x tends to 0 of this thing okay. and when you substitute this it will depend on m it will depend on m limit will depend because when you substitute y equal to m x x will be cancelled out and we get 1 minus m cube into 2 minus 1 minus m cube m cube into 2 m by equal to m x and 1 plus m square m square whole square. So, basically this depend on by a on m. So, limit does not exist limit does not exist. So, del u over del x is not continuous at 0 0. So, continuity fails therefore, this function this just satisfying the CRC equation is not good enough to we justify the function is analytic or differentiable at 0. Okay? So, that is one. Now, on the other end if the function does not satisfy the CRC equation then obviously, this function cannot be analytic. Okay. The con uh, if the function f whose real energy parts are this if real real and imaginary parts of the function f z do not satisfy C R C equation, then it cannot be analytic or differentiable at that point, cannot be analytic or differentiable at the point. For example, if we take the function f z which is mod z square. So, this is u x y is x square by square while the v x y is 0. Now, if you find the partial derivative of u with respect to x we get this thing del u over del x is this del u over del y is this while the del v over del x is 0 del v over del y is 0. So, C R C equations are satisfied 
only at 0 and nowhere else and nowhere else. Therefore, it cannot be analytic and cannot be analytic at 0 0 because for the analyticity the function should not be only differentiable at this, but it should also differentiable at every point in this neighborhood. However, it is analytic, it is differentiable because C R equations are satisfying at 0 0, the del u over del x and del v over del they are all continuous functions. So, this this function is and continuous <coughs> is differentiable at 0, but nowhere else is it not del u over del x and then so except at 0 0 we are second. Okay. So, we get this now is it not. So, we are getting 0 0 and this okay except at 0 0 that is all. Now, <coughs> the C R C equation in case of the polar form in case of polar form this we will not derive, but it is useful for sometimes when the function is not given in the cut in the form of x and y that u and v are not a function of a, but it is a function of r and theta. Then they in order to just verify whether the function is analytic or differentiable and if you want to apply the CRC equation, then it is uh, useful if you know the formula for CR equation in terms of r and theta that is in a polar form. So, the following form if f z is a function which is of u r theta and v r theta that is in the polar form where z is r e to the power i theta. Then the C R C equations equations in the polar forms are r del u over del r is 1 by r del v over del theta and del u over del theta is minus r del v over del r del v over del r. So, these are the form of the C R C equation in polar form and to drive this result just what you do is that x z equal to r e to the power i theta. So, x plus i y is this. So, x becomes r cos theta y becomes r sin theta. Now, find out the del u over del x and del u over del y keeping in mind this is a function of two variables. So, one variable will be constituted as constant while doing the uh, differentiation, but r is also a function of x y because r square becomes x square plus y square and theta becomes tan inverse y over x. So, r and theta both are the functions of x and y. Hence, to in order to derive this, we just go through that. Okay. So, derivation we are just uh, avoiding because this is uh, not it very much. Means. Now, let us come to our main is harmonic functions. harmonic functions. A real valued function a real valued function phi which is a function of two variable phi of x y a real valued function phi of two variable uh, a real valued function phi, uh, which has uh, a real valued function phi x y that has that has continuous second order second order partial derivatives.
derivatives in a domain D. and satisfy and satisfies the Laplace equations. Equation that is del 2 phi over del x 2 plus del 2 phi over del y 2 is 0 then a real valued function phi that has a continuous second order partial derivative in a domain D that is and satisfy the CR equation is known as harmonic functions, is known as harmonic function. Okay. So, for the harmonic function what is the must is the function must be a continuous function it should possess a continuous partial derivatives and apart from this it must satisfy the Laplace equation. Okay. So, solution of the Laplace equations phi which has a continuous partial derivatives up to order 2 will be a harmonic functions. Okay. Okay. Now, we wanted to relate this concept with our analytic functions. So, the result is like this. if a function f z where u and v is a function of x y let f z if f z is analytic in a domain d in a domain D, then its real imaginary part will satisfy the Laplace equation, then its real and imaginary part will satisfy, satisfy Laplace equation. Laplace equations that is delta u over del x 2 plus delta u over del y 2 is 0 and delta v over del x 2 plus delta v over del y 2 is 0 respectively in the domain T. That is u and v. we are harmonic functions. In fact, if you look or we will see when we go for the further uh, in Cauchy integral formula and other thing, we will show that if function is analytic, then it is infinitely time differentiable function. That we will see function f z of complex variable, if it is analytic, then it is infinitely time differentiable function, which is not true valid in case of the function of real variable, because a function may be differentiable once, twice, thrice, but may not be infinitely time differentiable function. So, but here it we have a very uh, good results that for a analytic function, uh, the infinitely time differentiable function is possible, and we will get basically the expansion of the function in the form of the series, which called the power series, Taylor series uh, and then also in the singularity in on the Lorentz uh, series. So, because of that if function is analytic then it means u and b both are continuous function and will possess a continuous partial derivatives also and apart from this uh, the, if the real imaginary parts then since it is uh, CRS equations are necessary condition. So, CRS equations are also satisfied at that point. Th then what he says is that is real energy part will be the solution of the Laplace equations that is u and b both will be uh, harmonic functions. So, if f is given one can identify the one can say the real part is a harmonic imaginary part is harmonic. Okay. 
let us see the proof for it. So, in order to prove this thing, <coughs> uh, here we are assuming of course, but if it's, it automatically comes. So, assume u and v are continuous functions are having continuous partial derivatives. partial derivatives up to say order 2. In the domain D. Of course, it were not required because uh, the result were not done that is why we are assuming for that. Okay. So, now when uh, this is result in case of the two variables, if the u or function of the two variable is a continuous function and possess a continuous partial derivatives up to order set 2, then mixed order partial derivatives will give the same value. That is whether we differentiate u first with respect to x and then with respect to y, we will get the same result when we reverse the order that differentiation of u with respect to y first and the result. So, the del d u to u over del x del y will be the same as delta u over del y del x and similarly delta v over del x del y will be the same as delta v over del y del x. Then no difference in case of if it has a continuous partial derivatives of order 2. So, this result is valid for a function of two variables and this. Now, further f which is u plus i v is analytic. So, its real and imaginary part will satisfy C L equation. So, its real and imaginary part will satisfy C L equations. That is, del u over del x is del v over del y and del u over del y is minus del v over del x. Let it be 1. Okay. All this will be 1, this is 2. Okay. <coughs> now, you differentiate it. <coughs> so, differentiate partially with respect to say y first equation. Okay. So, what we get from here is del 2 u over del y del x is del 2 v over del y 2 and this is del 2 u over del y 2 is minus del 2 v over del y del x. So, add these two del 2 u over del y 2 plus del 2 u del 2 u these two are del 2 u this is del v over del y 2 okay. and this del 2 u over del y 2 is del v over del x and so on. Okay. Then with respect to x so, what we get it that del 2 u over del x 2 is del 2 v over del x del y and del 2 u del x del y is minus del 2 v over del x 2. Okay. Now, you look this take this one take this portion and this portion. If I these two are identical therefore, these two will be identical. So, from here we get del 2 v over del x 2 plus del 2 v over del y 2 is 0. Now, if it look this two, this one and this one, then again these two are identical. So, minus of this, this my this implies this implies del 2 u over del x 2 plus del 2 u over del y 2 is 0. So, this shows therefore, thus therefore, we get u and v are harmonic. Okay. 
So, this was a so it means we get this result that if function is analytic function, then its real and imaginary parts are a harmonic function. So, if f z which is u plus i v is harmonic, then its real and imaginary parts are oh sorry this is analytic sorry is analytic analytic then its real imaginary parts are harmonic functions then in that case we say v is said to be said to be the conjugate harmonic harmonic of u. Okay. V is said to be the conjugate harmonic of V and U is said to be the conjugate harmonic of V, then vice versa, each other. They are the conjugate harmonic to each other. Okay. Now let us see. The converse of this may not be true. Converse means if suppose we have the two functions u and v which are harmonic and if I construct a function f which is u plus i v then it is not sure or it we cannot say the function is analytic. So, conversely or remark the converse is not true in general in general that is that is if u and v are harmonic functions or any two harmonic functions in the domain d, then the function f z which is u plus i v need not be analytic in D. Okay. Let us see the for example, suppose consider the function u which is say x square minus y square and v is suppose 3 x square y minus y q. Now, both these functions satisfy the harmonic uh, Laplace equation clearly delta u over del x 2 plus delta u, u over del y 2 is 0, because delta u del u over del x is 2 x del u over del y is minus 2 y. So, delta u over del x 2 is 2 delta u over del y 2 minus 2 etcetera. Similarly, del 2 v over del x 2 plus del 2 v over del y 2 is also 0. So, there are nothing you can immediately say that this these two are harmonic functions. Okay. Now, if we construct the construct function f z which is u plus i v. So, u plus i v means this function x square minus y square plus eta times of 3 x square by minus y q. Now, we claim this function is not analytic. This function is not analytic. Why? Because CR's equations are not satisfied. Why? Because what is the CR's equations? del u over del x the C R equations are del u because del u over del x is nothing but 2 x del u over del y is nothing but minus 2 y del v 
over del x is del v over del x is 6 x by del v over del y is minus 3 by square. So, we say therefore, del u over del x differs from del v over del y and del u over del y differs from minus del v over del x. CRs are not satisfying at the point which is not 0 0 at a point x by z different from 0. So, this function is not analytic functions therefore, the even the function u v are harmonic function, but the real imaginary part if you construct a function f with the help of those harmonic functions, then the function so obtained may not be a, an analytic function. So, this is what we could. Okay. Now, another is a once it is suppose a function u is given which is harmonic, we want to find the conjugate harmonic of the so that the function f z becomes harmonic. This is possible and then let us see the example to find the conjugate to find the analytic function. function f z which is u plus i v, where u x by which is given to be 2 x plus y q minus 3 x square, where u y is harmonic. This is given. So, our aim is to find the analytic function with the help of this harmonic function. Okay. Let us see the solution. <coughs> Since it is harmonic, so it must satisfy the Laplace equation and we wanted the function. So, uh, uh, we wanted the function uh, f which is u plus i v which is an analytic function. It means the partial derivative of u and v must be a continuous function and should satisfy the CR's equations. Okay. Now, let us see what is the word uh, first stage whether it is harmonic or not. Okay. Clearly, you satisfy this equation del to u over del x 2 plus del to u over del y 2 is 0. Why? Because if you take this del u over del x this is equal to what 2 minus 6 x by del 2 u over del x 2 is minus 6 y. Similarly, if you go for del u over del y uh, by it is equal to 3 by square minus 3 x square and the del 2 u over del y 2 is 6 y. So, sum will be 0. So, therefore, this is the harmonic function. Now, we wanted this to be so, to find conjugate harmonic function v, so that f z which is u plus i v is analytic, is it not? So, necessary condition for the analyticity is the CRs must satisfy. So, suppose v is such a function, so that u plus i v is analytic, suppose this is analytic, okay. suppose f is analytic for some v is for some v. So, it C R C equation must be satisfied, so u and v must satisfy C R C equation because these are the necessary condition for the function f to be analytic to be analytic is it not for f to be analytic. So, let us apply this C R equation. So, what is the C R del u over del x must be equal to del v over del y, but del u over del x is what? u is giving to be this. So, del u over del x is 2 minus 6 x y 
this is equal to del v over del y is it not del u over del x is del v over del y equivalent to this then del u over del y which is 3 y square minus 3 x square this must be the same as minus del v over del x is it okay now let us take this one this is 2. So, from 1 if I integrate it partially with respect to y integrate 1 partially with respect to y keeping x is constant. Okay. So, what we get v becomes 2 x minus 3 x square y. Okay. Uh, okay. Keep partially with respect to y sorry this is not. We are integrating partially with so this v will be equal to 2 y minus then integrate them by square by 2. So, 3 x by square is it not and then constant of integration will be a function of x y because when you are integrating partially with respect to y x will be treated as constant. So, I am keeping a constant I can choose constant as a function of x nothing wrong in it. Okay. Now, apply the second that is differentiate v with respect to x. So, when you differentiate v with respect to x what do you get del v over del x this is 0 here we get minus 3 y square plus the derivative of this function with this. But this must be given equal to what minus of this part that is 3 x square minus 3 y square this is given y second. Okay. So, from here we get minus 3 is cancel that is 5 1 x is 3 y square 5 1 x is 3 y uh, 3 x square 3 x square is it not 3 x square that is 3 x square because minus this cancel. So, 5 1 dash x therefore, the integration of this 5 1 x becomes x cube that is equal to integrate with respect to x. So, we get x cube by 3 plus a constant c 1 this constant of integration will come. Okay. So, we get from here 5 1 is there therefore, in this third you substitute in third. So, we get v becomes x uh, 2 y minus 3 x y square plus x cube plus a constant c 1 2 y minus 3 x is y square plus x cube minus and what was u? u was already given this was the u 2 x. So, u was given u is 2 x plus y cube minus 3 x square by. So, for function f becomes f z which is u plus i v we can just write u plus i v. So, 2 x minus 3 x square by plus y cube and eta times of 2 y minus 3 x y square plus x cube and then constant of integration we can set dash that is all. So, this will be our function which is analytic function. So, that is why we can we, we can go we can find out the constants uh, functions which are analytic if I know the one harmonic function any harmonic function we can identify the conjugate harmonic. So, that the this becomes there. Now, there are usage of this CRC equations we can apply the CRC equation to get this uh, some results. So, what is the application of CRC equations are? how to find uh, how to use the CRC equation to get. Suppose, I ask this question given the function f is analytic given 
f z analytic function such that modulus of f z is a non zero is a non zero constant is a non zero constant in the domain d in a domain d okay so given that so then prove that or prove that f is constant function in the domain d okay so let's see the solution what is given the function is analytic it means its real imaginary part it satisfy the crs equations so let fz is u plus iv where u and v are uh, satisfy the crs equation therefore what will be the mod of fz mod of fz will be u square plus v square under root of this is it not now this is giving to be constant this is given. So, we get from here is u square plus v square is some constant c that is all. Now, differentiate it partially. So, we get twice u del u over del x 2 v del v over del x is 0. Similarly, twice u del u over del y twice v del v over del y is 0 this we get it. Now, apply the CRS equations. If I take from here del u over del y, we know since f is analytic. So, u and v satisfy CRS equations that is del u over del x is del v over del y del u over del y is minus del v over del x. Okay. Now, if I replace this del u over del y is minus del v over del x is it not del u over del y is minus del v over del x and this del v over del y del v over del x is from here uh, del v over del y is del u over del x. So, substitute it here from the 1 if I solve it using multiply the <coughs> replace this thing in terms of x and we get from here we get twice u square plus b square del u over del x becomes 0. Why? You multiply this by u this by v. So, when you multiply by u square you get u v then you multiply v and these two get cancelled and this becomes using this one del v over del y is del u over del x they can be added. So, we get this one, but this is constant this is constant. So, this cannot be 0 this implies the del u over del x is 0. So, what they showed that u is independent of x then similarly we can show del u over del y is 0. So, u is independent of y. So, u will be a constant and similarly we can prove for similarly we can show that del v over del x is 0 this implies that v is independent of x and del v over del y equal to 0 will imply v is independent of y. So, v must be constant. So, u must be constant, u is constant from here, v is constant, therefore, function f z which is u plus y v is constant. Okay. Thank you very much. Thanks.